Welcome to English Through History. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe or leave us a review. It is appreciated by our small team here. Today's episode is the next installment of our Historical Theories three-part set. We hope you enjoy the content. Our next conspiracy is the moon landings in 1969. Some people believe that the Apollo moon landings were faked by NASA to win the space race against the Soviet Union. They argue that the footage was staged on Earth, pointing to various inconsistencies and anomalies in the photographs and videos. The moon landing hoax conspiracy theory is a belief that the United States Apollo moon landing in 1969 was staged and never actually occurred. This theory gained traction shortly after the Apollo 11 mission, which successfully landed astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin on the moon on July 20, 1969. Proponents of the hoax theory cite various pieces of evidence to support their claims, such as supposed anomalies in the photographs and videos taken on the moon, discrepancies in the lighting and shadows, the lack of stars in the lunar sky, and the waving of the American flag in the vacuum of space. However, these claims have been debunked by experts in various fields. For example, scientists have explained that the lack of stars in the photographs is due to the camera's exposure settings, which were adjusted to capture the bright lunar surface, causing fainter objects like stars to be washed out. The appearance of waving in the flag is attributed to the momentum of its deployment rather than the presence of wind. Additionally, the Apollo missions left behind tangible evidence on the lunar surface, such as scientific instruments, footprints, and the lunar rovers, which have been observed by subsequent lunar missions and even by Earth-based telescopes. Furthermore, the scale and complexity of the conspiracy required to fake the moon landing would have been enormous, involving thousands of people across multiple disciplines, and it is highly improbable that such a conspiracy could have been maintained for over 50 years without being exposed. Our next conspiracy involves a very well-known author. The authorship of William Shakespeare's plays and poems has been the subject of much debate. Some conspiracy theories propose that Shakespeare did not write the works attributed to him, and that they were instead penned by another individual or group, such as Francis Bacon, Christopher Marlowe, or a secret society. The Shakespearean authorship conspiracy is a long-standing debate that questions whether William Shakespeare, the renowned playwright and poet from Stratford-upon-Avon, actually wrote the works attributed to him. Instead, proponents of various alternative authorship theories suggest that someone else, often a member of the nobility or an educated figure, wrote the plays and poems commonly associated with Shakespeare. One of the most prominent alternative candidates proposed is Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. Advocates of the Oxfordian theory argue that de Vere had the education, life experiences, and literary talent necessary to produce the works attributed to Shakespeare. They also point to perceived similarities between de Vere's life and events in the plays, as well as supposed cryptographic clues within the texts themselves. Another alternative authorship theory suggests that playwright Christopher Marlowe, Francis Bacon, or even Queen Elizabeth I herself could have been the true authors of Shakespeare's works. These theories are often fueled by speculation surrounding the lack of surviving manuscripts in Shakespeare's own hand, as well as discrepancies in his education and background. However, mainstream scholars overwhelmingly reject these alternative authorship theories. They argue that the evidence supporting Shakespeare's authorship is robust, including contemporary references to him as a playwright, his inclusion in lists of notable authors during his lifetime, and the publication of his works under his name. Furthermore, the arguments put forth by proponents of alternative authorship theories often rely on circumstantial evidence and speculation rather than concrete historical or literary evidence. 
The consensus among Shakespearean scholars and historians is that William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon is the most likely candidate for the authorship of the works attributed to him. Our next conspiracy is the Chemical Trail Conspiracy, and this taps into environmental and health fears, proposing that the trails left by aircraft are part of a larger, more sinister agenda. This conspiracy theory posits that the white trails left behind by airplanes in the sky, commonly known as contrails, are actually chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed for sinister purposes by government agencies or other shadowy groups. These alleged purposes vary widely among proponents of the conspiracy, ranging from weather modification and population control to mind control and secret vaccination programs. Proponents of the theory often point to the persistent nature of contrails, which can sometimes linger in the sky for hours and spread out to form cirrus-like clouds, as evidence of their supposed nefarious nature. They also cite anecdotal observations of unusual aircraft behaviour and changes in environmental conditions as further proof of a covert spraying programme. However, scientific consensus firmly rejects the claims made by proponents of the conspiracy theory. Contrails are a natural byproduct of jet engines, formed when water vapour in the aircraft exhaust condenses and freezes in the cold upper atmosphere. The persistence and spread of contrails depend on various atmospheric conditions, including temperature, humidity and wind patterns, rather than any deliberate spraying of chemicals. Numerous studies conducted by atmospheric scientists, meteorologists and other experts have thoroughly debunked the conspiracy theory. These studies have consistently found no evidence of any widespread spraying program, and the observed phenomena attributed to this can be explained by known atmospheric processes. Despite the overwhelming scientific evidence against it, the conspiracy theory continues to persist in certain circles of the internet and popular culture. It often overlaps with other conspiracy theories, such as those involving government secrecy, environmental manipulation, and health scares. The origins of the conspiracy theory can be traced back to the early 1990s. While contrails have been observed in the sky for as long as commercial aviation has existed, it was during this period that concerns about their potential harmful effects and government involvement began to emerge. One of the key events that fueled the development of the theory was the publication of a report by the American Air Force about weather modification. This article prompted discussion and speculation about the possibility of a secret government spraying program these writings, along with those of authors and activists, helped popularize the idea that contrails were not merely harmless condensation trails, but rather part of a covert geoengineering or population control scheme. The advent of the internet played a significant role in spreading the conspiracy theory to a wider audience. Online forums, blogs, and social media platforms provided a platform for proponents of the theory to share their beliefs, exchange information, and recruit new adherents. The proliferation of amateur videos and photographs purporting to show evidence of chemicals spraying further fueled public concern and speculation. Over the years, the conspiracy theory has continued to evolve and adapt to new developments, incorporating elements of other conspiracy theories and fake scientific beliefs. Despite being thoroughly debunked by scientists and experts, the theory remains influential among certain segments of the population and continues to be a subject of debate and controversy. Our final conspiracy this episode is the Titanic switch. This theory proposes an audacious insurance scam, suggesting the doomed liner was swapped with its sister ship in a deceitful bid for financial gain. The Titanic switch conspiracy theory suggests that the sinking of the RMS Titanic in 1912 was not an accident caused by hitting an iceberg, but rather a deliberate act orchestrated for financial gain or other nefarious purposes. 
According to proponents of this theory, the Titanic was switched with its sister ship, the RNS Olympic, as part of an insurance fraud scheme or political conspiracy. The theory gained traction primarily due to perceived discrepancies in photographs and other evidence purportedly showing differences between the Titanic and Olympic. Some proponents claim that the Titanic was actually the Olympic disguised with new nameplates and other alterations to make it appear as the Titanic. However, the Titanic switch conspiracy theory has been widely discredited by historians and experts. There is substantial evidence supporting the conclusion that the Titanic and Olympic were distinct vessels, each with its own unique features and characteristics. Additionally, the theory lacks credible evidence to support the notion of a large-scale conspiracy to switch the ships. The sinking of the Titanic was a tragic maritime disaster that resulted in the loss of over 1,500 lives. It has been extensively researched and documented, with the overwhelming consensus among historians being that the sinking was the result of a combination of factors, including the speed of the ship, the failure to properly heed iceberg warnings and shortcomings in safety regulations. While conspiracy theories surrounding the Titanic have persisted over the years, they are generally regarded as unfounded and speculative. The Titanic switch conspiracy theory, in particular, lacks credible evidence and is widely dismissed by experts in the field. We hope you have enjoyed the second part of our historical conspiracy theories. The next episode will conclude this chapter.